two teams we haven't seen as much from, so it's still, I think it still has a factor. This is FaZe's pick, though, so they're, they're looking for redemption and they're looking to bounce back. We definitely said Train, pretty unlikely actually going to be winning that one. It's surprising even got into the veto there, but obviously it did. But uh, Nuke, just to reiterate as well, there has been an update on this map this week. We're, we're, using, we're using the old version, so we kind of made sure we looked into that and we're seeing what the differences were. There are some key changes with the T-side especially, but that's not going to be used as a vent. So we'll be using the old version of Nuke, and yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. I haven't actually casted a ton of phase or optic on this map at all. I, I think from what the analyst said, phase actually do play this map quite regularly. Um, since the addition of Carrigan, of course, they're trying to get more tactical, and this is a map where you can bring a lot of tactics to the table. To answer your question, Matt, we will have a knife round here, so yes. that is very important. It is, it's, it's extremely significant. The fact that Optic starting out on T, you know, CT side in this map potentially, it, having already gone up one round, if they get something like a 12-3, yeah. again, it's not as common as of late on Nuke. If they can get that kind of momentum at the start, it's a massive uphill battle for FaZe with pressure on. We have a lot of pressure on, absolutely. This is the best of three. Loser does go home. This is the decided game. Optic, they've uh, been an interesting team the last year or so, haven't they? Like, they were just known as the upset team, never really got that deep in tournaments. But they were known as, quite frankly, to be completely honest with you, the reject team. Yeah, All these sure. players have been cut from another lineup at one point in time. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement to make. But uh, with Maybe the exception of Tarek, who chose to leave CLG. But I guess in I guess in the, the, the stages of mid-2015, when we had like Pro League finals in London, that's when they were kind of turning up and like not necessarily getting to like, the finals or anything, but they were actually, well, not getting to the playoffs, but actually causing upsets against teams like Astralis and stuff. They're just known as the upset team. We saw it in that video, the interview in the series as well, but now they're kind of putting themselves in a position where winning tournaments and actually going toe to toe with some big names today. They have the 1-0 advantage against FaZe now, and we move on to Nuke. Optic did win the knife round, Matt, so like you said, a lot of pressure coming towards a FaZe Clan. This yeah. is going to be an interesting one, and it looks like we'll be kicking things off very shortly indeed. The time is actually going down right now. I can tell you the buy. Four sets of armor for FaZe Clan. They have got Carrigan on the single smoke as well. There is a lot of opportunities to go for the vent dive here on the pistol. Obviously, the TT don't have the same potential to spray down, so they don't have the M4s. Ramp room is obviously a big opportunity as well for FaZe. You don't really see that many T-side teams actually use it on gun rounds, but the pistol, it's very viable indeed. It's the gateway for the map, and then you can get towards lower as well. It looks like they'll be going for the latter here and aiming for ramp room. Well, they're waiting on the inside of the squeaky door and Stan's getting a little more aggressive toward radio. He wants the information early. It's not uncommon to see this pushed up pistol with the other rushes, but there's three players in this way. That's very well! Picks up all what? three! Stanislaw! Massive to start it off. He took the early damage in the exchange, but they just couldn't land the shots. And Alu finally does get something rolling for them, but he's taken out immediately after by Tarek. It's down to just Kerrigan. Bomb will be retrieved, but he's completely surrounded. Yeah, well, there it is. No chance of a bomb on here, I'm afraid. He's just going to be looking for kills. If he can get one or two, that's $600 in the bank. It's a headshot, but can't find the frag. And Mixwell finishes things off. What a round by Stanislaw. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe against three players in the ramp room as well. Just nails the headshots over and over again. So aggressive there as well. Normally, the CD would sit really far back, try and just play for information. This is an aggressive angle from him. Like I said, both T-sides do go towards the ramp room. And how are they not getting that frag there? He mows them down with the P2000. Lovely work from Sanasol. We get the 1-0. And we have a technical pause to kick things off straight away. Okay, then, Matt. Time to calm yeah. down, perhaps. I like how stoic he looked after the round two. Yeah, man. Just ice, man. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you'd assume that uh, Sanasol will be picking up an M4 to treat himself after finding three kills. Why not? No bomb planted, so you assume this will be the force by coming from FaZe. I can see it right now, just to ruin the surprise. They will be getting Tech Nines and Head Armor. It's, this is the kind of round I don't really agree with it on Nuke so much, because you really need utility type. To go towards outside, you need smokes. To get towards upper in any sort of way, to get down the vent dive, you need something to work with here. The Tech Nines is not making work picks. Like you can rush around, potentially. There's a really tight choke point. You're going to get sprayed down there. I prefer the teams actually take maybe the Ecos and like go forward and have a really strong buy going to that first round. It's like one of the few maps I'd say the second round forced by Without getting the bomb down, doesn't really work out too well, but still, you obviously still have a buy going into that first one, but it's just not going to be as strong. You can't get the orb, for example. But Naf will be the player who dropped out. He's back on the server. We're ready to go. I think it was a sound issue, too, because he was playing with his headset as the admin was checking out his computer. So, either way, minor issue. Well, nothing optic, as you say. And I, I still think the pistol round on T side is extremely important just to get momentum, get economy, to make sure you can have Especially the buys, to have the utility early on to execute as we know you need to. In the best of three, when you've just lost the map as well, you just want that morale boost, right? Like, you want to think, okay, let's get back in this now. We just lost six rounds in a row on train. Let's try and just uh, show them this is our map and we're going to dominate here. And when you get taken down like that, one player, in a situation where you should be getting the refrag there, you had three players just jumping around and panicking a little bit there. They weren't expecting Stanislaw to be there. That can be the cause of arguments potentially as well going forward. But round number two comes in, as I said. A force by here. There is going to be one smoke and a flashbang alu. He invests fully as well. So that's going to be the all very difficult unless you get the bomb down in this round going forward. I said that Nuke is 
problematic to make anything happen about their utility. So fast outside is going to be rain with that Tech 9. Very fast. Already yeah. dropped down inside of main. They're going to hear this from behind the vents. Now watch the Raptors as well, though. Because Nap's got to wrap a long way around. That means the player on Raptors is left susceptible. Vulnerable mix well goes down. Nap treated. This is a good entrance toward upper. Ammo nearly gone for Rush. Thankfully, Tarek gets inside in time to bail him out, keep him alive. Six HP only. Again, it's Kerrigan, one versus three. A little bit of armor to work with, but no guns down directly in front. He's got to go all the way into the site just to find one, and that's heavily guarded at this point in time. Bomb down inside of it. No need to leave it. It's been spotted as well, so takes a little whisker of damage there, but 83 HP. The bomb's still down, like he said. Very unlikely to find a kill here. Santa Claus finishes things off. He's had a good run so far. Four kills across the board for Optic Gaming. And... Uh, I think it was a double kill for Rush overall, but yeah, it looks a little bit promising there for FaZe. They came into the upper bomb site. They find two kills, but no par going down. It does actually indicate it's going to be a full EK going into this one. 2 0 in favor of Optic, looking quite comfortable so far. So again, if this one, it should just be Glocks. Maybe a couple of PZ 50s here and there for FaZe Clan. We have got a Deagle for Rain. Interesting. Takes some total down to 1800. Maybe round number three. Just get the bomb down. Maybe a vent dive here. More of the same rush upper. Maybe Ram trying to get that trade frag. So they'll be focusing on the wild side. It comes out to Rain. If you can find a 1D here, pretty unlikely. But if he does, something to maybe work with. Two sewing machines. The MP9s against unarmored players. They're going to be playing closer angles. One inside of him for now. Smartly, they put the rifle inside instead. And he's going to fire up. Does catch off AZ. Help of Tarek, who's done decent damage already. The second of which, by the way, just to mention it, Stannis lost back to the ramp. He's going to give up a lot of position a little bit closer, but that's not going to even happen. Naf's going to cash, jumps around, three kills for him. About $1,800 to gain. And now we start the game because it's going to be the buy, the first one for FaZe Clan. It's going to be all AK 47s as well. Yeah, that's the thing. That force buy as well. Normally the Orpers won't take the force buy. They'll maybe just take a PD 50. Not by the armor. Alu obviously went all in as well. He was believing in the approach they had on that second round, but he has the AK. They do have smokes to work with. They have no Molotovs. Not such a huge other nuke. It's good for the post pod situation, holding the CTs off, but not many opportunities to flush them out at the start of the round, like a map like Cash, for example. Round number four comes in. Two SMGs. You'd assume maybe aggressive towards Ramp, I'd say, pushing that position, trying to find that first opening kill. Something a little bit unorthodox. You want to try and make those close range potential come in for the SMGs. But you have got a bit of aggression here from Tarek. Spray through the smoke. Doesn't find anything for it just yet. Slight damage. Oh. Thrown into radio, but it's better off from AZ. Tarek down. This opens up so much space now towards Secret. And that flies. Ooh. Trying to play a clever spot, but it's yeah. a very tough spot to get out of. And he's spotted up already. He's got to run. He doesn't like to. He tries to stay, and there's too many men around the corner. Uh, had the movement mechanics from the SMG. Mixwell was there to back him up, but didn't get there in time, and he goes as well. Yeah. Easy with two of the entries. That sort of position, as soon as you miss that first shot, the MP9, you're just 100% dead. They can just actually toy with you at that point. Even if you get one, they're going to get the refrag. They've already killed Tarek as well. So, very simple round there for FaZe Clan. It's, you have to take a little pinch of salt here, though, Matt. Obviously, it was that bonus round mentality we often discuss. You have two SMGs left over from the, the anti ecos. You're just trying to make them somehow bring it, uh, a victory into your favor. It's pretty unlikely, but if they do find a couple of kills here or there, it can be very beneficial to your economy. There should be money to opt to buy into the next round, but FaZe, nice clean one for them, keeping five players alive. So you can see, yeah, Rush, 5k, same story for Tarek as well. They can even bring an all-pound, so actually, it's, it's not a big deal. Had they won that round, it would have been amazing for them, but uh, not a big deal, they lost it. Try and keep this. Why not? For the exits. There's five of them, they've got to leave that site yeah. somehow. He just wants to get more and more money. If he can get one kill with this, that's another $600 to his total. That'd be amazing. Just one kill would be great for him. Yeah, would indeed. Everyone else has pretty much a buy in hand. If he can buy that and get, get that uphill, it would be a round in hand as well. He's going to go hunting for it. Bomb already too far gone, obviously. That's oh, right. it's toward where his teammate did drop down one of the M4s. So there was one at that corner from where Mixwell died. Couldn't quite get there. So there it is. Phase do find that first round there, but like I said, the buy more than easily coming in for Optic here. Gonna have one Phalanx, that was Stannis, like we said, if he got that one kill, the SMG probably could have got the M4 out, but it'll be on the lesser rifle there. Three M4s and Tarek with the AWP, interesting enough. We'll see what he can do here. Presumably we'll be taking that outside. No orbs as of yet for Phase They did keep all five players alive, of course. You're not gonna throw away an AK at this point. See what you can do. And uh, probably do more of the same here. Outside smoke, trying to find that first pit. They caught Tarek and his pants down outside in the previous round, but the initial smokes, no initial aggression from Optic like we saw last round this time. It'll be more of a traditional round from the CPs. Bounce that Molotov in off the fence and in behind the red crate. Turk's going to back away to get himself an angle toward Twinkie. But the smoke's out, no gap. They'll be able to cross into secret. No rotation yet down toward the lower position as well. That swing play we talked about, actually, I may have been fooled myself. I think Nafly 
might be in position. In fact, he is. So decontamination stairs for him. He'll spot the cross at the very least. No one else yet to get down toward the vent zone. He's actually going to get out and go that direction himself. So puts him closer to the site. Takes him out of a position to get through the read. Instead, they'll be spotted up. Now the crossfire set because Stanislaus is able to slip into work control room. He finds two but goes down. It's traded evenly. Good shot from Derek because now he can get the MVP as well in toward the ramper. And Rush already has this problem solved. Nice little crossfire there. That's a very strong way to discuss his in length. Right? Having that player towards that vent says and towards Decon as well. Uh, towards um, window room, sorry, as well. That means you can actually have, if you play it correctly, one player takes the first shot, one's hiding. As soon as you take the aggro away, the other one faces. It can be so problematic for the terrorist. You want to be like, using a smoke. Obviously, that's difficult. You've had to use so much utility to get in that position. You want to be closing off one of those choke points, and FaZe didn't really do that, and they got punished for it. Round number six comes in. They still have enough to buy, but five AKs once again. Optic now in a great position with that way, AWP in the hand of Tarek as well. Good awareness from him. Watching that ramp room after the low execution came in. Takes down a really pivotal kill. We go to round number six, and we have smokes and grenades coming in. Oh, that's a pretty cool that's, grenade. I was just going to point that out. So that's entirely done to blow out every single skylight. We often talk about that as well. That's the other thing we talk you can about. You see, like, he's masking it. He actually lined that up as well to knock out every single skylight window. That's cool. I haven't actually seen that before. I think it was... I, I remember seeing it in the first we, version. We used to do that in Someone source, in NA used to do that, believe it or not. Yeah, we haven't seen it in CSGO. We used to do that a lot in the previous games, but... Yeah. Uh, works and then this is why they're opening it up. I'm loving that we're seeing some of these executions. First Molotov bounces down, second one covers off rafters. There's a third one that's available. I don't think they threw it. That will go all the way into heaven. Tarek misses a shot. Spot was there, but Mixwell's made up for it. He finds two and Tarek's still hunting. He's gonna find it. Alu, the only kill on entrance. And it's on to AZ, who's gone around the back way instead this point in time. He's gotten yeah. himself into heaven. He could surprise one or two, but there's too many of them to be caught off entirely. It's not like the communication won't be relayed. Trigger this one lines up. One knows the second toward the hut. Has both third ones there to peak, though. And as I said, just far too many members inside of the site. They're doing a good job there to actually damage the economy overall of CTs. AZ in the 1v4. Managed to take down the orb. I don't think it was recovered as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. We'll have a look. Yeah, I don't think it was, Matt. So he actually did a good job of taking the orb down. Unfortunately, though, they can't really capitalize at that point. It's going to be a phase down eco here. It's going to have around 2k across the board. Nice little replay there. Tarek's getting in the shots, and it's going to be 5-1. In fact, the SMGs come out once more. There's MP9s just trying to go up against those unarmored players. A perfect situation for it. It's going to be PD50s, a Glock, no nades, and uh, presumably an optic victory here. Take that lead towards 6-1. Smoke goes out toward radio. They're getting the SMGs closer. Capitalize on economy whenever they can. Flies well with his MP9. He's going to get very close on top of the hut. And thankfully, he's got a little spy hole to peek through. Looks well on a clever little spot on top of the inner silo as well. Lots of little angles you can still play for the CT side. You may not have the rafters above Squeaky Door, which in my opinion was the most annoying and most powerful. But you've got lots of other angles you can still take advantage of. Tarek spawning toward outer, but one player's already crossed over. He's aware of it. Reads it. Spots down AZ. Just for the second shot. Let's catch off Alan all that going on. It's just going to be Nafli pushing in, cleaning up two MP9 kills for him again. So as I mentioned, building economy where they can. 6-1 for Optic. We're starting to get into that situation we talked about, Henry, where FaZe Clan starting out on their map on the T side with pressure on. This could be a very tough challenge for them. Yeah, it's starting to run away from them a little bit here, but still very early days. We're going to run up rate. Still don't have that open in the hands of Alu. He hasn't really had the opportunity to get rolling with that whatsoever. And it's Kiyoshima having a little bit of a rough time here. Same sort of a Carrigan as well. He was very quiet on train. He's currently on zero for six. We'll see what happens here around number eight. It's going to still be that MP9 available. I think they might have upgraded it, you know. So, yeah, that's actually going to be dropped and bought. And M4, no orb for Tarek this time. But five rifles, very viable still for the CTs on you. Rain's trying to line up a spray right now through the wall. Spraying down the bottom of the hut. Oh, he doesn't quite land it. It's clever. It's one of those why not try it plays, but... Also a slim margin of have success on that. He seems to have lots of little tricks back on that lobby roof. Well then, without the orb outside, you can see Naf trying to get a little bit of information there towards Secret. So we'd hunt one for eight, you can check out towards Silo as well in that position, just trying to get information. It's quite a safe position, you can get your head blown off, but as long as you kind of time things right and kind of use the sound cues, you can be pretty safe like he's doing right now. Just gonna be stopping that one kill. If you can take AZ down a full back, that's amazing. That's pretty much secured the round at this point. There it is, full back now. Enough. Don't have to do anything else. You stayed alive, got the man advantage. And now they'll be second guessing it. They'll have to use a lot of utility to get down there. Oh, Hugging that wall, very tough angle. Has to hit shots, doesn't manage it, but thankfully he's got rotation support. Very low on HP as well. Kerrigan and Rain, five and seven. Ooh, Alu, this is good. This is all right. I won't say it's good just yet because he's got to get in the vent before he's spotted from heaven. Oh, he just gets there. Smartly gets on the ladder. 
I'm not 100% convinced he wasn't actually spotted there. We snapped away too soon because that was certainly ready and aware as he was coming back down. It's all under rain. Yeah, well, there it is. Not having the orb. You can see that adjustment coming in from Nafly. He gets two kills overall. That's our first kill on Aza. You can see he had no idea that there could be a player down in that position. He's expecting the AWP to be looking at him from CD Spawn. Tarek has already shown that. But uh, this time, not the case. Three players alive. We just have right now seven HP. Good luck, my friends. You've got 10 seconds to try and do anything with this. And he does run into a CD there. Intoxic. Naf finds him and gets his third kill of the round as well. Optic now, I'd say at this point, starting to run away with this one. It's going to have to be another eco of a phase. Seven, one down. Haven't really shown me too much. It's impressed me so far. Here's the replay of Naf. That's a great position there. AZ, not even checking it. He's not going to even have an idea there's a player there in that position. It was always a strong position, to be fair, even in the old iteration of Nuke, but in the new one with the amount of reliance, I would say, and emphasis on the smoke execution outer, if you can get there, you're almost good for a kill. If you're playing it passively, if you're going for a peek toward Twink and you're up against an op, okay, different story, but in that situation, definitely good for a kill. We do have the tactical pause now for phase. I think it's probably a good time to take it. There will be eco this round, but it's a time to slow things down, work out what the problems are right now. They're quite focused on getting those smokes down towards outside and trying to get those positional control. But the thing is, once they get down towards lower, we saw it before. They weren't really locking down that crossfire at all. Optic are reading the situation very well indeed. Tarek finding a kill with that orb in previous encounters, and now he's got that weapon again. Last couple, they've been rolling the five rifles. He's going to throw a spanner in the works this time. Not a huge deal against the pistols. It should be a guaranteed round for Optic, but still just keeping things a little bit surprising for them each round. Rain to the roof once more. Not this time with clever tactics. Instead, with accuracy, it's all he's got to work with. Just the deagle. He's the one with head armor. His teammate already gone. AZ caught trying to push toward that secret position fast. And Nafly more than ready and able. Mixwell's again trying to use this clever little spot to get the slight pixel gap in toward Hut. I'm not sure which way to look as two options present himself. Doesn't take any damage, thankfully. Look, it's the information they're there, and that'll give Nafly a sense of warning. Despite they still try and spray through with the Deagles to catch him off. And Tarek now knows that he's off that roof. Nafly goes to the front, spots the shadow as well, but can't close out on it. Tarek's wrapped around to cover off the at least one more, in effect. We'll go all the way through and Kiel's got himself up at the door, so this will be a straightforward round. We'll go 8 1 this to Optic. Very solid T side, or excuse me, CT side so far. Yeah. The money hasn't got out of control just yet for the CTs. They have been quite close rounds, but you're pointing something out right now. It's an entry fragger with zero kills. Yeah, that, that is a bit of a problem. Kier Carrigan as well, one for eight. No one's really like the scoreboard up. It's difficult to pinpoint anyone. No one's really performing at a high level just yet, but Alu has got the AWP. They're taking the pause now. Worth of the problems are not necessarily getting those opening picks required. This should be a full default. When you have an orphan on the T side, it's not required. But that's the mentality you want to go with. Maybe go towards Ramming at the first pick, the more traditionally towards outside and try to go toe to toe with Tarek. He's not known for being an amazing orb, so Alu should win the duel in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Let's see if Alu can find him. Not even an orb. Okay, goodbye Tarek. Rain has deleted him, and it's going to be a 5 on 4 just like that. Maxwell's going to push in toward the hut. Paint a vibrant picture. I'll do some math for you. Oh, That's quite lovely. That's a vibrant picture. Let's get back to that. <laughs> Rush starts it off. Mixwell takes down Keo, but basically they're averaging 1.4 kills per round right now on the phase side. That's not nearly enough. We're well, on round 10, they had 15, they got 15, 16 now as Kerrigan takes down Nafly. That's an over -tail. When you have the man advantage on a map like Nuke, you want to make the terrorists do all the work. You want to make them actually push the positions and take the chances there. He takes the chance of equalizing this thing. Rain, great position now. Should be able to take his kill down, but Rush gets the better of him somehow. He had no idea who was there. Goes down the low HP, a three on two now. Kerrigan does neutralize things, but it looks like the round will fall apart. It's at the Kerrigan, he's been very poor this series. Can he find anything here? If he can win this round, all be forgiven. He doesn't need to commit to this. He's got 47 seconds. He can backpedal towards Secret, wrap toward Heaven. There's options available, but sticks around only to lose damage. Smartly has his crosshair placed toward Heaven when he does go this direction. And they're going to be reading this. Yeah. And he's just got to get them moving. Because as they were set, there was no way through that crossfire. So this is just best chance. And he has actually split them up. Smoke goes out. He wants the fast plant. It blooms in time, but not quite. Because Stan was there to get the lineup and get the jump. 9-1 now for Optic. Yeah, it's getting uh, a little bit out of control at this point. Since there was an opening pick there. Rain gets a, a solid shot in towards Tarek. He thought, this is going to be the run. This is it. But Rush, this one tap from hell, I have to say. AZ, he probably had no idea what the hell was going on there. Here's the final kill from Sanistor. It's very obvious what's going down there. I think those situations, you, you don't really get away with it. Obviously, there's a spray there, the smoke at that point. It's one of those situations when you've got kills and it's in, you're having rotating CTs, you're guaranteeing a at that point. It's not really going to work out for you when the CTs is waiting for you and lower. Well then, four AKs and a Tech-9, it is a fourth fire. I'm going to class it as that one with Aloe just in that pistol there. Yeah, and as you mentioned, not getting the off out. Just goes to show, even now, just only a Tech-9 for him. 
Yeah, this is rough so far. Like you said, Kiyoshima had the player designed to go into these upper bomb sites towards Ramparam outside, finding these initial kills. Yet to frag after 10 rounds. They have taken the pause. You can see the adjustment bringing the AWP out there. That's not even an option this time. I haven't really seen them really work towards ramp at all or try a full-on upper execute. There's been lots of defaults so far, trying to get towards the lower steps, but there's always a reply from Optic. They've just adjusted perfectly almost every single time. Naf again is going to wait in behind these vents, relying on the player inside Raptors mix well. It's giving the information when they push through. Smoke down, flashes well for Keo. Potentially to go toward the vent fast, but Mixwell's actually going to gap above it, so he'd be spraying him down before he even gets toward that position. They're not throwing aid back through the door. Well, no one there. They've already put their position elsewhere. They're going to start to look toward radio and ramp, which terek has gone very passive on, so if they can rush Mayan fast enough, he'll get one shot on the op, but by the time he rebolts that, they should be slipped and down. And in fact, if we get further in than that, good first shot. They've got to go. Just commit to it. Drop down and get it out of the way. He'll have to rotate and let the rifles do the work. Good position from AZ as well. We'll catch off Nafly. Finally, a bit of space to work with, but Stanislaw rotates early enough. He catches them off down below. And that's going to seize things for a moment. Bomb's still up and in the hands as soon as I say that. Gone as Alu gets caught. The thing is, you've got no nades to work with now. I guess you've got that kill, but AZ has to commit. He has to start finding kills outside. He lands one, but you go towards lower right without any nades to actually clear out the window room of Molotov there. You've got like six different angles the CDs could be hiding. You've got the dark spot, the window room, decon, back of the bomb site, and toxic, the vent. Did you see what I'm saying? You need the smoke on the bomb site, even some flashbacks. There's something to work with here. Lower is going to be almost impossible when they know you're coming as well. They find that kill, they try and capitalize, they're trying to clutch his draws right now, but round number 12. Crowder coming to life as well, it seems. And it will be another eco here for phase cannon. It's not a force buy, it's a partial buy. Still, the only round they've won, Matt, is when the CTs have those two SMGs, the MP9s, who are trying to have that bonus round mentality. That's the only round phase they've really picked up so far, and it wasn't down to tactical prowess, it was just five players outside, hit the AK headshots, and just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the weaponry there. But we have got tech nines here, we have got smokes. Right now, we need some rounds of phase. I'd say you need at least three just to really stand a chance going forward. 10k for Stanislaw. 8.5 for Mix. 8.05, I suppose, but Tech Nines. It can be deadly if you can find the opening and find the movement. Rush through hot, rush through squeaky, or you're going to go toward ramp. There's so many availability aside from outer. And Mixwell again is going to get early Molotov down toward that position. Hot Naf goes into his burrow behind the vents. He's not really been challenged in that position, and he's able to rotate back out toward main and cover off outer when they do elect to go that direction as well. Keep in mind one of the changes they have made now in the new version of the new... The next version, the next patch of this is to put their railing out. Good Molotovs through, they try and use them again. That Skylight Nade came through, they do move Mixwell, but he's able to evade them. Get back through the smoke and Nafly lines them up. Nothing to come out of this round either, despite getting the defense out of position. The crossfire at upper, nice shot from Stanislaw as well. The crossfire they established at upper with the three men, two rafters, Naf on the floor is actually very strong. So we saw a little execution there from Faze. We haven't seen those on the gun rounds, but they are finding a couple of kills there with the tech nines. Maybe this is the mentality they need to go with going forward. Let's get those Molotovs on the roof. Let's get the smoke towards heaven. Let's try and just give some sort of angels for our big, big players here. Kishim does find his first kill, one for 11, but uh, round number 13, like I said, two rounds required here, like in terms of two more. They need at least three going forward in the next half. It's going to be a real tough affair. We have got Alu on the AWP once more. Can he actually find his opening kick? It was raining last time. Yeah, the AWP has had little to no impact on that weapon so far. Alu is trying desperately to find a shot through Squeaky. They want to use it quickly. Smoke and Molotovs in front of his way. But he's got to line up now with it if Naf wants to play that position. But Mix again is going to find the opening pick, getting aggressive on Hunt and then backing away. Tarek is an op caught by Rain. That opens up outer. Naf's got to be so careful they get into it. Nades covered off. Remember, Fumble off the kick. It down the floor. Good trade. But Mix again inside. Hunt's going to get them both back. The Spaniard goes massive. It's Kerrigan that finally does something of it. But it's just him remaining. Another one versus two. 19 HP. Bomb grabbed. Minute and 13. But he's got to play this perfectly. I'm rotating right. He potentially, if well, he goes there, Stan's got prime position on him already. He's not going to anticipate this. As soon as he drops, sound gone. Stan knows he's in position there. He and has, Pete coming in. He has to go. Oh, what can he do, Matt? You've got 19 HP. You've got the bomb. You don't know where the CDs are. You, like you said, you make a bit of a noise out there, and you're done for. 12-1, and the money's it's in dire straight. You just have to force by everybody these last couple of rounds, so you have no choice. Mixwell, well, like you said, going absolutely ham here in the hub position, finds two kills, and brings the rounding attention once again for Optic. So five AKs, but look at the utility. It's one smoke available and three flashbangs. This is desperate, desperate times for phase. A team that's certainly been on the ascendant since the addition of Carrigan and Alu as well, but this has been a real rough game for them, especially on Nuke. I haven't really seen too much. And this is their map pick as well. We're expecting them to 
Tenchi, you take this one before. Okay, Cash is almost certainly going to come in. Optic not really known for their nuke skills, but... Here we go, AZ. Maybe more of this. Just run into a certain position and see if you can get the headshots. AZ opened things up. Yeah, it's already down below. He's yeah. going to play from decontamination. No peeking out of stand. Did last time door open. Didn't see this, but... A peek immediately. Kyo will slide out. There's your entry fragger. Only a second kill in the game, but it's an important one because now they'll get a bomb down on the back of it. They've got something to work with, finally, phase. As Mix gets to a closed door, to camp contamination, he's got to wait just slightly for his teammates to get in position. One way peek from AZ's potential and perspective to see through and in toward those hallways. Sees the jumping down, Aiden, Tarek gone. And this should be a closed out round for phase, finally. Yeah. Back to basics, it seems that works out. Rush ramp and over the headshots. AZ delivers. And it will be a 4-2, but like you said, it should be no reason why Opsi can win this round, and they do not. FaZe managed to find the second round here. The thing is, they have to go with simple rounds like that. When you have no nades whatsoever, one smoke and two flashbang, choose ramp. You haven't really gone there as of yet. Rush it over the headshots. AZ, very talented player, does find the majority of the kills there, including the opening one as well. And you can see it doesn't really fill them with confidence. No one really getting too excited just yet. That's only round number two achieved. And I think we've got a double orb setup coming in for Optic as well. Not really used that much on a map like Nuke, but if you take it towards ramp, if FaZe try that again, you can get the opening pit for sure and fall down. It's a great place to actually play the weapon. I'm going to be almost certain that's where one will be heading. Yeah, so get the orb this time. This is the adaption. Needs to hit that shot though. Ali takes him down. Rush finds the skill immediately after, though, that turnpike rotation. They're going to bring the op from Tarek in the same place. Good lineup. This is the shot. Keep in mind, the Vaden player rotate down below as well. It's Nafli caught up. Oh. Kerrigan's got an opening. Alu's got position. Tarek falls. Finally, they're getting something working. We're still staring at that 12-3 scoreline, even if they were to convert this one. It's only a man advantage. Alu on 13, though, does have an AWP, so all he has to do is hit the one-shot wonder with bomb planted and keep the post plant in their favor. Very yeah. likely he's in the right position as well because Mix, okay, I take that back. He's actually going to push through to radio, so this could give him a chance because Rush, they both came from the same angle. He's got the lineup. Well, here we go then. The retake comes in there. I've got a smoke for the bomb as well, but this would be an absolute nightmare for FaZe to lose his round. There should be no reason for them whatsoever to actually give anything away here. Find one kill, that's secured. This is the one that matters. Now he's going to face and nails the shot as well. Just Rush remaining, but he does get a headshot here. There is a small chance now. Ali does face at this point. He's got no vision from Decon. So, okay, from Toxic, apologies. But AZ does find the final kill, and it will be 12-3. Rush around map. That's apparently the way forward here. And to be fair, they have ran quite well fortified in most rounds, and then I think they got a little bit passive on it because they never saw attention there, so well, the they did take is, advantage of it late. The thing is, they actually, like I said, they get that double orb set up. That's a go towards ramp. They said, oh, let's do that again. We'll just get that first shot. I'd have preferred him to have a deeper angle there at the back and actually see more of it. He went for the headshot box, misses the shot. He definitely had an opportunity to land it, but not the easiest angle for him. And at that point, FaZe do find round number three. We did say going into the second half, three was the magic number. Not necessarily the best one, but it means you, you win the pistol on the CD half and you. There's no reason why they can't give up the same treatment here in the second half. Four sets of armor for the CT, a kit in the hands of Alu, and five sets of armor for Optic. That suggests something very simple, sticking together, finding the frags, and seeing what's possible. Default for now, not going to be giving too much away, certainly not a rush. But Carrigan, this is a traditional way to play ramp. We saw the CT's going aggressive in the first half, but uh, you wanted to sit there, get the information, go for one shot. You don't want to overcommit. As soon as you spot it, the Tierra is there. You want to fall back towards lower, and actually just hold and strong arms that position for your team. Rain sits to watch any rapid outer, but it's going to be on to ramp again. This is where Stan laid down the law last time. But Kerrigan, he goes passive, gives it up, looks for the rotation. He'll wait well down inside of the site. The rotation he's speaking of is going to be Howling, but he stays above in heaven, and they're going to wrap all the way around on this. He's in prime position. He's dead shots quickly because they're coming up the ladder fast. Three in front goes to the knife. Can't get it out in time, but look at Kiyoshima from the floor finds two, and Rain will shut the door on Stan. Well, we might have a game on our hands here. They do get control of the ramp room. This guy's get, decided to go towards the ladder. Obviously, with no flashbangs or anything, Alu, he's gifted a free kill. They're almost certainly going to nail that first one and be very unlikely to miss all those shots. Runs out of ammo, but Kiyoshima, like you said, lighting them up there from the bomb site, manages to spray them down. Here's the POV from Rain, and Kiyoshima, nice shots from him, to be fair, and uh, quite an easy piss to run overall for FaZe. Isn't it? Too uncomfortable there at all. It will be the force buy from Optic here. They have one smoke to work with. What's the play? Maybe a smoke out of squeaky door, try and get them towards the lower bomb site. That could be interesting. It could actually be happening here. And they decide to go in. Down the vent, they try and go. The bombs drop down there, but no players has ever yet. But they do find two kills in the tech nines. Can play it from Rain to at least back away from the site. No the whole round is lost to cover off the far on, on excuse me, on AZ, but good shot from Alu as well. Pulls this back and just Stanislaw remaining tech nine. Fast play toward upper to try and get a plant, not successful. 
knows there's one in the heaven and rafters area somewhere, but can't find the angle. It doesn't quite peek far enough to spot up Alley, putting himself in hut as well as going to get his feet. Easy shot down through the wall. And Faye's not done yet, as you mentioned. It is their map choice. We said pressure would be on. Winning that pistol's massive. Now they can start to show us why they picked this map. There's certainly a chance now. They can get the 3-0 here. They've negated the force by from Optic Gaming there, so it's going to be a fully goat. One smoke purchase once again. They did try to go for that squeaky door rush. And the new update, it's actually kind of funny that now that's actually a real possibility. It's gone back so you can actually nade that door now and go for those rushes. That makes the T side up actually a lot more interesting. This was done to develop into quite a balanced affair in terms of like top teams playing it and finding T rounds. With that adjustment, I can't wait to cast it. It's going to be really chaotic to see those upper rushes coming back into fruition. So Kerrigan sets early toward the ramp, has the support from Allen early on to get utility out. Allen will then rotate away and play the swing. My swing, I mean play outer to cover off rain. So at this point, he's support in every situation. And that single smoke bounce toward radio will slow them tremendously. They want to try and bypass ramp, similar to what we saw FaZe doing at the end of the first half. Get down toward lower and a fast plank. Man, Kerrigan's still here in the ledge. Doesn't land shots. Very little damage, in fact. Comes out far worse for wear. Thankfully, Alu gets called back in time. Catches off both Tarek and Mixwell. Importantly, the bomb's not one of the players to bypass it. We'll just get there now. The rotations are already in, so bomb plant not going to happen. It's just going to be half fly remaining. And no more fly on the wall, Henry, as you would say. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my quotes. I haven't said it for a while, though, so thanks for bringing it back up. You're welcome. 12-6, so now we do have a game on our hands. Not that much separating them on the CT half. Six rounds in a row isn't a stranger thing to uh, imagine at this point. Round number 19. We'll have a look. This is the kind of bonus round for Bezo. We saw this from Optic. Not necessarily the same sort of setup. They had two MP9s, but Bezo got a Famous and a UMP, but certainly enough to work with it. All the nades, five incendiaries to stop the rushes and the smoke grenades to work as well. No warp on either side. Five AKs for Optic. Not necessarily super well equipped himself, but enough to go for the smokes outside and try and go for a default here. The smokes will be thrown nice and early as well. We'll see if we can get any players towards uh, Secret here. So they use the third smoke. It's a gap. There's a massive gap. I just, yep, good point. They use a third smoke to try and cover off the cross to the red Rain. crate. Fourth one on the corner, but you're dead yeah. right. That's such a massive gap. Doesn't even need radar to give him any aid. He's got a perfect okay. lineup, but good shot from Nafla. He came up close. This is going to allow the cross for sure, and Alu's given that position up because of Rain's ball. Now, he actually came in through. The hot comes all the way into the site. What? Gets three inside with a lovely tap toward Alu. All him so far this round as Mixwell follows it up to trade his death. It's all on to Kerrigan. Do you know what? That gap might have actually been to Rain's detriment. He kind of, his eyes lit up and he thought, this is it now. I'm going to get the big spray down. They don't know I can see. And then Naf comes out squeaky door, finds the free kill because he's so fixed on that one situation. And I'm sure, okay, so it comes out main, but you can see Rain. He's just thinking, okay, I've got this guy. It's locked down and his teammates aren't there covering him. And then we go. Watch what this shot at heaven. Wow, that's actually kind of nuts. Yeah, I agree. 13-6. Oh, to get one step closer to knocking out Baze in this best of three. We'll be 2-0 as well. The orb comes out there. It's not a huge round of phase. Lost that one. Obviously, like I said, bonus round. Weren't fully equipped. There was an SMG and a Famous there. Alu with the AWP. This is when he really needs to come to life now. He's going to have to carry them through these rounds. Find these aggressive opening picks. And I like this towards ramp. Trying to get the first kill, but he gets flashed off and takes a bit of damage there. Really smart flash. Take no chances. And a massive round, as you say, if FaZe lose this. And they got the gaps. It's the same thing. Rain's going to be watching it. They are going to cross this time. Sprays in. Can't find the first. Does good damage, but can't land the kills. So Rush goes down to 54. And again, can't capitalize. No flash off the corner. They're going to sit in the stairwell. This is not uncommon. Get the map control, then sit and see what the CTs are going to do in response. Naf is just tearing FaZe down apart in these last couple of rounds. He finds another opening kill here by himself. His teammates are going towards Secret. Stannis Lord coming in towards Heaven as well. This is looking horrible for FaZe fan. They don't really know where the Terrors are heading to. Tarek finds another kill. Mixwell chimes in as well. Five on two. Carrigan and Alu. Left in a desperate situation as Carrigan holds towards lower. Now by himself. Faze are falling apart. They're crumbling under the pressure here. And Carrigan, no kit, one flashbang. And he's had a very quiet series so far. Good luck doing anything with this. Goodbye. Sir, placement high. Mixwell hits it. 14 rounds for Optic, six only for Faze. Well then. Okay. They timed that well with our silence. Yeah, that, was good. That, was, that was not planned, but it well, worked out. This is like, I was about to say to Optic, uh, there's obviously some holes that need to be plugged here. If you're not watching your demos back and seeing those massive gaps and teams that are just trying to exploit that, you can see Rain thinking, oh, you can see him coming by, start spraying the smoke. That's actually a bit of a problem you have those gaps in the smoke, but do you know what? It's all for not. If you're winning with this sort of round, it's going to be five players alive as well. FaZe has been completely shut out that round. They didn't get that first kill. They get towards Secret. They have a player squeaky door. There's someone going towards Heaven as well. They're just getting completely murdered on every single choke point on the map.
14-6, pistols only for phase scan. This round pretty much decides it. Yes, it's a CD-sided map, but nine in a row after this one? I'm not so sure. If they can somehow win these pistols, we might have a few more rounds to go, but Optic looking like they're closing things out 2-0 here at the moment. Seems to be all signs pointing to it. So we'll see what they can accomplish with pistols, how aggressive they want to get on the CT side. Is it going to be hunting for information toward radio? An intern take advantage of these rifles and long range outer positions from Optic. Event early rotation might serve them well. No smokes. They're trying to take advantage again of the fact that they have the long range to their name. As Tarek wraps in to cover off main, but AZ's position, quick as it may be, might get bypassed because everyone's going for a full wrap toward heaven. Tarek to lead the charge as well. It's Alu top ladder where he started off this pistol. And I like that Nafly's anticipating. Yeah, they might try and push and get some information. I'll just wait and spawn to cover them off. So the rest of the team is yeah. out on the hunt. Well then, still five players alive either side, but look at the map control Optic have got here. We're going to have to hope for some ungodly crossfires with the 5.7s. Let's see what they can do here. Alu's going to be the first one. Conversation. And he gets the headshot, maybe. They can do something with this round. Positional boost toward Grant nearly catches them up, but Terra comes the other direction. So oh, Carrigan. back to four versus four. Yeah, he's having an absolute struggle this series, I would say. Yeah. Not one of his best. Given the chance, they give it five or six seconds. Watch the position for AZ. Ooh, that's... Uh, he goes up, does catch him off, goes for the reload. Thought he was going to walk by him. But you're dead right, it's been a quiet series for him. That gives an AK now to AZ, and Mixwell knows he's there, but can't necessarily find a lineup. Ooh. Doesn't know what's going on toward the vents, therefore AZ. He's found yet another kill. Mix is going to have to bust in on this position, and he's turned back and caught off Napfly. What a round he's turned out to have, AZ. As he brings us down to what was a one versus four oh, for Mixwell, and as such, they're going to convert it. Well, it all comes down to Wazy, I have to say. It was that three kills from Intos? We didn't see the headshots, I'm sure we'll grab it on the replay, perhaps, but it sounded crispy from uh, the sound there, but um, it all kicked off with a little headshot from the 5 7 from Alu. Funnels them down towards lower. Azy's ready and waiting, gets the AK in his hand, and delivers two great headshots there, presumably, like said, but 14-7. Uh, Still a lot of work to do here, I'm afraid. They lose this round, full reset. Then it's GG once again. They're not exactly fully equipped here. They have a Famous. And uh, do have a couple of AKs picked up, so it's not a terrible buy, but it's optic from what I saw in the previous gun rounds. Face Clan still have a lot of work to do here. The outside smoke's coming once again. Presumably with the gaps once more. We'll see whether that is uh, still ringing true from Fain Brain's POV. No, not quite. So the not second so one went to the left this time. And they're throwing them one of the corner above, too, so Rain won't be getting any vision tags through. Still catch Tarek down to 75. Perhaps not a significant margin as they have AKs up, but against the FAMAS and M4s, it could be something to think about. He's going to try and clear out to where the radio room as well as Ring gets back into position at main. He's trying to catch them off. Mixwell's going to rotate in this time. He does have shadow advantage, doesn't even get that far. Alu hits the headshot on him coming back from CT. And Tarek's going to go hunting and turn for him through Big Garage, but Alu smartly changes his angle, looks correctly, guesses at heaven, spots him up, can't find the shot. Now does Rain go hunting and try and force Tarek into this corner or not? Because again, Alu's finding openings and Stan's going to convert. So this is turning out well, but Faze still has Rain bomb down, covered oh. off. Tarek, lovely shot as he gets back in position. AZ's got to rotate up the, the, the ladder, excuse me. Hard position to walk back out from, tries to time it with a Molotov, and Stan gets drawn and ready. All onto Kerrigan and map point. Series Beckons, point. Exactly that. Series point for Optic. If Kerrigan can't make something up, they spotted up already to Terra Pinch Crossfire. He's down. And it's exactly the situation they feared. Starting out on that Terra side has hurt them dearly. And that's a full reset as well, Matt. So they're going to go into Series Point with a UMP, a shotgun, a Deagle, two of those. Alu comes into the 5-7. This should be GG right now. It's going to take another AZ. Wonder class here. If we can actually do something with it, who knows? But um, Deagle, decoy, they bring <laughs> everything they can, spend every last dollar, you know. Decoy comes out as well, let's see if we can bounce around the corner, bring out a heater perhaps. Never quit. Is that your motto? I usually just quit. Yeah. <laughs> After the first round. Yeah. That, that's it, boys. Can't well, win this we one. Lost, we lost pistol. Yeah. I, I died first, it's over, guys. So smokes again toward outer, not surprisingly for Optic. They're going to try and take over the secret stairwell. They pushed through this last time. We saw Tarek in toward that big garage. Was there to do it again, but it is going to be fully into AZ. Last time he had a pistol at lower, he caught them off with good positioning. This time it's decontamination with Deagle. I'm not sure that's the cleanest weapon to try and decontaminate the situation with because there's a lot of players coming. They do have the crossfire. This is the one we're talking about. It's not quite because that was not yeah. the bottom of the stairwell, <laughs> but again, it's also the weapons that hurt. Well, 
this is really tough. AZ might get his one dig. I'm almost feeling it. It's building up inside me. Now that he gets one. That's going to pull him back, though. Tarek reconsiders. Molotov goes out. Jump is there for AZ, but he can't capitalize. Good jump shot. Pops back in as he gets the second hit. That's going to put Tarek down. It gives them the man advantage, and they're going to reposition themselves. Stan's got to watch this back stairwell because there's an AK down. If they leave that too soon, it could be a problem now. Oh, can't quite catch Keo through the door. And that's a bit of a problem because it leaves him out of position and AZ converts. He's going to step up with an AK-47 to catch Stan off. Good response from Mixwell, but he's on 6 HP. Nafly's got to come to his aid. And he's left Keo alive, remember, behind him. So he has to consider that as a possibility. He can't just freely walk in and get overly aggressive to these positions. Seems he wants to do so regardless. He wants that bomb back. And in doing so, it has brought Keo down into the bottom bomb site. He's trying to bait him back in, hence walking back behind the vents. Mixwell spots one, can't land the shot, gives the information to his teammate, though, but he goes for the quick, gets to get the gun back out, manages no. it in time! His teammate's gone, but Nap gets caught! Kerrigan just barely there in time. Just about getting through that round by the skin of the Z face clan. Still, the money in dire straits, but they do manage to save over an AK and a UMP. Optic now, just trying to close this one out. You can see how tense this round is. AZ, I think that's the last bullet of his deagle as well. Finally gets that kill and he gets a second as well. He's been so crucial in these last couple of rounds. Still seven more to go to force overtime here. Optic's still in a great position. They've got the full buy coming through. I'm we'll looking at the buy for phase as well. No orb as of yet. It's been a massive problem for Alu throughout the series. He hasn't got the orb as much as he'd like or as much as they're used to seeing of him. The UMP for M4s as well. And AK chucked him for good measure in the hands of Alu. Lacking grenades are easy, no nades whatsoever. Karen just a smoke, and he's got that SP as well. But Rain does manage to pull back against Mixwell despite going 9 HP early. Naps in the Dora Hut, no one peeking through like we saw Mixwell do in the first half, and Naps actually burned Rain alive in that corner. Smart throw, knows he was tagged up. Let's bring it back down to fours, and Tarek. In a position that he's been absolutely promising in. Inside that big wall, can try and control the other situation. No repeat, but Kyo's got better position. Only one, though. Lovely shot from Tarek on the way back through. Grabs the bomb again. And stands in good position to watch back through the window and cover off the rotations back from ramp because they want to try and get in hot. They want to try and flank them out. Bomb's going to be planted safely, but only just because Tarek's slightly susceptible to being peeked from above as Naf watches inside of the hut itself. Three remain. The third is AZ. He wants big. Wrap around the game. Good play from Terry, but can't convert. That's going to give him an opening. Naps a bit wide on his peak. Does turn back to catch off. AZ goes down oh. immediately to Kerrigan, though, and that's going to be another round for FaZe. And this time, they buy a little bit more space than even just one round. They break the economy. They do. They might have something to work with here going forward. They get set two AKs. They win another round. Optic should be on Eco this one. They could force into this. They want to keep applying that pressure and not allow the economy to build up for FaZe. But I think when you have this sort of lead, it's not required. You still have six rounds to go. Let's finish this one off properly. No need to force. Deagles could still do the work for them. They're going to buy PD-50s, Deagles, and a couple of smokes as well. So the smokes, where could they go? They could actually go towards the upper side, potentially smoke towards heaven, maybe outside the squeaky door as well. They could go towards outside of a very simple execution, trying to get towards secret. We'll see what they opt for him. So we're going to round number 25. Game getting deeper than expected. After we saw the first half, the phase just about holding on here. Oh, that's a nice shot from Maze. He's had a good nuke, to be fair, considering how badly it's gone for them. He's been providing some very good shots. And massive impact in that eco round. We already mentioned. Three kills down at lower. Rain's gonna try and play the smoke this time a little more aggressively, and this is a direct response to what Derek's been doing. Good spray, and he does much better in that position than he has inside of main itself. It's easy to close it. 10-5, or excuse me, 10-15, so five rounds to go before that overtime becomes very real, and I'm surprised to see the aggressive buy into this because yeah, they could have easily three. afforded to wait one more and get a full buy with better economy and yeah. better utility. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that sentiment. Um, there's no real need to force this. You're, you're giving phase now. You're opening the window round by round a little bit more of these force buys. Could have still partial at this point for Tech 9s. You can do a nice sort of ramp rush. You can get the bomb down. Something like that. This is an interesting one. because they're going to be a... What is it? Fourth state lost money to lose this one. So not enough to buy. Presumably they don't get the bomb down. They're limiting themselves, but the players are hitting shots. Especially Nafly's had a tremendous series so far, but Alu smoked out for now. Smokes go down. Rain not going to be the main entrance this time. It's after Alu who finally has the AWP. Oh, Rain is there. He's yeah. in towards Garage. He's, okay. Yeah, exactly that. He's, he's changed it. He hasn't had the success inside of the main entrance. Annex, for those of you playing along in Australia. Just bypassed him though. He'll have heard this, but flames down on the stairwell. They'll just wait. He's trying to hold the angle for a drop shot. 
And Naf again, similar to what we saw in that eco that they actually did convert to a win on FaZe's side, waiting back towards T-Spawn in case anyone wants to push through lobby for information. We haven't seen that swing toward the stairwell as we you were kind of discussing to get the rifler into secret rather than in the big garage where Rain is. So it does still give them a bit of good Naf spawn inside of that small tries to spray back into Kyo. 39 HP he'll get away with. Naf on 37, so dead even exchange. Very tense now. We hit the 45 second mark. Carrigan patrolling towards lower. This terrorist have made it towards secret as well. A lot of pressure towards him. If he doesn't make this first frag, if he goes down with nothing, it could be a huge problem here. It's a decent position to get one kill. It's quite safe to play from there. You're not going to win the round necessarily by yourself. But just get one kill, stay alive, get information. And Rain, he's helping out. He finds Stannis Law. Good start for FaZe. Kerrigan still has position as well, a control room, now fly gone, just three remaining, all three inside the lower site, Kerrigan just spots one, but Mixwell turns back in time, reactions in his favor, and Tarek's got position inside decontamination to watch back in the vents, but fronts the problem, AZ's already got Mixwell down, and an aid into rush leaves him on 57, each player needs to find at least two. Keep the obligation split, make that four for rush if he wants to win this out, knows their bubble sprays away already and they pinch in, good take from FaZe to get back into the site. And again, this buy, they get bombed down, so in fairness to them, success as far as that, they just didn't have the manpower and positions in post plant with timing in their favor, well but leaves them very broke. A bomb does save them to that extent. That's the one thing I have to say with a four round loss bonus, no bomb plant, and that forced buy I would question dearly. Let's remember how FaZe got back into this game, the pistol round. They had five pistols, AZ gets one kill lower, picks up the AK, he keeps the dream alive. We thought it was awful and all, we thought, okay, it's redundant, not gonna lead to too much, but now, He's actually broken the morale slightly of Optic. They've had to take a port here. Their money's in a bit of a dire situation, like we said before. I agree. No real reason to force it that round. They had to get a little limited to the grenades. You just want to close this out, right? Just wait till you have the full gun round. You've had really convincing ones so far. Get the full buy-in. Get all the nades you need. Close it out. Now they're actually making things interesting. They have to take another eco here. Well, I guess it's the partial buy. This is what they should have done before. This is the round they should have done in the previous. Tech nines, deagles, smokes, body armor. Keep the money at 2k. Got maximum loss bonus coming in. This is what should have come in the last round. Not too late as of yet, still need four in a row from phase, but it's making things a lot more interesting now going into round number 27. Smoke out from Alu early on toward the radio room, it's mix with Tech 9. Just to get himself in a position, use the pixel gap in his favorite through HUD. He's just gonna drop on top of it. You can hear that, that's fine. What can you do about it? Because it's still a very powerful position, especially with an AK. Against what is just pistols. Tarek will open the door. Will that keep his attention for long enough? Sprays down. Does find it. Relocates. Gets the second. Exactly that. They know he's there. Can't do anything of it. He's got three. AZ stepping up yet again. Mixwell. He gets him in the end, but Stan gone. It's just he that remains. 40 HP. Instead, doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, AZ really coming to life right now. He's a player. You don't want to let him get in his zone. And he seems to be finding multiple frags. He's actually on 24 kills, man. He's having a sensational series. All things considered, we were kind of pointing him out when he was looking desperate for phase. But now, three in a row. This is looking possible now. As so we get into round number 28, the full buy finally comes back in for Optic. Now they do have the five AKs, five smokes, five Molotovs, and the flashbangs. This is how they should have been closing it out. But now they've allowed Alu to get back into this. He's got the orb in his hand when he's his absolute strongest, of course. They've got the full buys here. They could have actually negated this situation. But now, a real chance for phase to take this to overtime. Rain fast, quick, but countered off. He wants to get to the corner to catch off the AKs. He's gone back to that mini position. The problem is he's spotted out from squeaky door as well, so he's got nowhere to run except back towards CT with his teammate down. Alu, Rush is going to create a massive opening. Nash through the hut. And FaZe might have upped in the last few rounds, but I don't think they've gone high enough to climb the green wall just yet until Kiyoshima tries to do something. He's the only one left. They know exactly Whoa. where he is. Good nade, good damage. Position on Rush, he didn't see him. Kiyo might just keep this alive. It's down to him and Mixwell, and he's got bomb inside of the site. Good read as well. No Mixwell's gone toward outer. Preset crosshair, great pixel aim through the bottom of the crosswire, and he's got the knee spotted. He's got to back away from it. He still has positional control from the ground. Headshot potential. Mixwell flashes in, and Kiyoshima saves it, pulls it back. And it goes 15-13. <laughs> Carrigan's loving it. What a performance of Kiyoshima. That could be the one that gets him back in this game. Two rounds now required. And it seemed unlikely. A three versus one. This grenade. So much damage. And he finds a second kill as well. But great awareness from Kiyoshima. He looks towards the ladder. Finds out his position as well. And a completely out position. So really, really nice stuff from Kiyoshima. And now, 15-13. He wants to buy into this one. They will indeed, Matt. It's going to be three AKs at Galil. This is, this is it. Winner overtime.
and it seemed like Optic did everything there. They had the perfect kills outside. Rush finds two. Nafly comes out squeaky door. He finds AZ as well. I thought that's a kill. AZ being the one that's been wrecking them. He goes down about anything, but Kiyoshima, he's the hero at round number 28. And here we go then. Assume this is a, a tactical pause this time, yes, for Optic. So four AKs, a little limited on the utility. They have got the smokes to work with, but not as strong as it was before. Allo's still the AWP, got the opening kill in the previous round. The unpause comes in. Round number 29. Faze looking to take this to overtime. Massive, massive round. Stanislaw fully invested with just a little. Alu impact, 21 kills so far. He's got his AWP again this time as well. Easy will be the first to play in the Raptors. Drop again toward that hut position. The AK, M4 instead this time. He's dropping in early. He wants to try and catch them off. In fact, he's going to rotate over. This will leave Rain inside Big Garage to watch the Rapid Outer and Easy to be charged with the task of covering off a secret push. Rain again, this position he's done better here, but he doesn't land the spray this time fully. Let's take Tarek down, but the reset of aim was too long and Stan's able to trade it. Thankfully, Keo steps up once more to find Rush. Snap, so good on these entries. Finds another, oh, we no, go. with the gun out. Nap's got Alu down, it's a two versus one. He may be able to pull this off, but again, if he doesn't, money's gone on the optic side. Yeah, and the problem is, in. exactly. You said it, Bomb is down, they're playing this together. So three potentials there, sprays in for one, doesn't know, but gets back through the door. Oh, oh easy, just slides out in time. Both playing together, the buddy system prevails. 15-14, the money is in a horrible situation for Optic as well. FaZe might have done just enough here to take us to overtime. It was looking so unlikely as well. Optic, such a strong first half as well. Looking great when they got to 15, but so many rounds in a row now. I think that's actually going to be seven for FaZe now. One more required. The buy comes in. It's one AK, three Tech Nines, and Mixwell, he's got a Galil. Okay. Right then, we've gone the distance. I thought this was going to be done very, very quickly indeed, but... Phase now, if they get this to overtime, all of a sudden the advantage goes in their favor. They'll be so pumped up for this. Half tries to go in for the preemptive strike through that smoke while it really does his giveaway. His position gets an aid in his face before it goes down to 84. But look at this fast play. He's going to get the secret already. AZ's down. Fast rotation. That's given away by a smoke. It's not the best. It's, I don't think it's got a full gap, but to check it, Mix is going to flash in regardless. Can't go beyond it. Realizes now that that's not a smart decision as Kerrigan covers off toward the ramp. Yeah, good timing on the smoke there. They know a player's got down towards secret, but he's not going to be rotating just yet. The most logical thing is the T to come towards ramp. He's locked them out, and at least he gives some time to actually work out what the real situation is there. Mix goes back as well. Rings in. Uh, he's in position to cover four, but he's not 100% sure he wants to look that direction yet. He knows he's there. So it's a fragile play for him to make. Stan's going to bust out all the skylights. Try and mask that they've got more utility than they do. They do have two Molotovs. They could throw similar ones to what they saw against them. So Rafters, not on hunt though. And Keo's gonna dodge out the first flash into the wall, turns it back. Down goes Rush, down goes Tarek. He was slow to get started in this game, but Keo Shima. Oh, 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 is he gonna do enough? Nafli found two mix falls. Somehow Naf found two with a very awkward situation on the ground, but Stanislaus in the sight, surrounded. It's going to be overtime. And I have to say, AZ and Kiyoshima deserve all the awards for getting them there. Absolutely. The three-on-one for Kiyoshima as well. I thought we thought that was it. The full pistol round from FaZe. They somehow come out on top of AZ's sensational AK pickup as well. And Kiyoshima does just enough there. Nafly, a thorn in FaZe's side in that round, but they still keep it alive. Overtime comes in. 10k MR3. Like we said, if it does go overtime after that sort of comeback, the moral advantage is certainly going to be in favor of FaZe. They're going to be super pumped right now. Everything's reset. They've got the all power, the full buys. And here we go. Round number one. This has turned out to be a great map here and made this series really memorable. And we'll see whether Optic can bounce back after losing eight rounds in a row there. Alu fast toward the ramp to start it off. Don't need mention with money over time. He's got his AWP. Now Kerrigan's established his position. He'll fall back and rotate away. Hoping to find early damage. Door to be open from Rush. Easy backs away from it. Flashes over, drops to the floor, finds one, can't relocate in time to get Tarek, but it's a huge sheet again in the Raptors. He's gonna pick up two. And Alu chimes in to take down Nafly. They're looking very impenetrable on that upper site. Absolutely, it's a set piece from Optic. We did discuss it before on train. They're a team that does fall back for this when the, the pressure's on. Doesn't really work out for them. Looks very easy there for FaZe, as you said. Comfortable almost as we go to round number two here. 
Wouldn't be a surprise they got the 3 0 on the city side from what we saw towards the end of the Optics T half. Orb comes out for Nathlight. He's been sensational with the AK 47. It's interesting to see him adjust to the Orb now. And they haven't done this before. Let's see if he can find that first pick and maybe find Alu who's getting a little bit comfortable. It hasn't really been challenged so far. Or immediately, Frost open and find the shot. Molotov smartly placed. He goes down to 46. A bit of HP loss than an AWP isn't the worst thing in the world. Now he positions himself accordingly. Because he leaves himself at a predictable angle. He's good taking down at this point in time. Stan's gonna take advantage of the smoke. Already on the catwalk, flashed off, so stays inside of said smoke, but gets too far exposed, and Alu takes him down. In the meantime, Optic with their four remaining players will get towards Secret with the exception of one, Nafly, who's been constantly waiting for Lurks to push through. And he's again on the stairwell. Good headshot, takes down Mixwell, jumping up spots two more. They're gonna try and challenge him. He still has the advantage in this angle. Another shot comes through. Terex the next in line. Let's find the response with the AK. Now he's gotta get in position. He's gotta find a way to support this, but with an AWP far removed. The outer position. Terex actually gonna like to go back to him rather than the other way around. Well then, four on two. Now for Tarek, 45 seconds. Do have the bomb, but not really many options here. Gonna have to try and maybe walk in towards ramp room and try and get lowered. It's time ticking away now. Now Fly trying to find a pick in the main entrance. At this point, the other CDs don't have to give anything away. Wait for them to touch the bomb site. Try and plant. That's when he should strike. That's when there's gonna be no time remaining. And uh, you don't really need to be hunting for frags at all. You need to be disciplined here. Don't give anything away. Tarry makes some noise there. So there'll be no one player is coming towards heaven. Flashbang is all he's got. Let's see if it works out for him. Well, down goes Wayne. Ah, yeah. Shot available, but Al Alu with an AWP. Far too ready, and phase take first two rounds in overtime, so the momentum has definitely shifted now. We said it was going to be a challenge going down 12-3, swapping over, back against the wall, tournament point. And it did very well to pull this back. Uh, yeah, and now the money on the bind that opened the previous round as well, 2-0 down, is normally affects the C team, I have to say. Uh, but the terror is heavily affected by this one. Two AKs, a UMP, a Deagle, and a Tech-9. Look at this adjustment now, Rain, he brings out the Auto Sniper. A crowd pleaser. Let's see if we can get anything going here. He'll be positioned towards outside. Flashes come in. He'll dodge it as well. Could actually find a couple of kills here. No smokes out just yet. They have thrown a close one across to red. They should have done it again because that auto sniper's lining them up. Even flashed off. He's tearing down. No oh. one running to secret it through the smoke. He lets it rain because Rush gets caught rushing and down he goes. Rain's on 25, but it's only Mixwell and Stan remaining AKs in each of their hands. And AZ again. It may be predictable, but it's such a strong angle, it doesn't matter. He's got such a jump on around the corner. First one falls. Mixwell does trade it, but it leaves him in a one versus four. And he's tagged up at 73. AWP and Auto Sniper still in the mix. He's going to try and go backwards to find one of them. Seems counterintuitive, but he knows it's very likely he's going to be trying pinched in. If he can open this up, it does leave his options open. At least available to wrap back around, <laughs> yeah. but 49 seconds. If he pulls this one off, I'm done. There's no way he can win this. He's in the lower bomb site, has to get out there. He has no smoke. No, like Once again, CDs don't have to give anything away. Wait for him to touch the bomb site, then you all face at the same time. Two and up and two and lower, that's perfect. There should be absolutely no possible way he can win this. He's being methodical. Tries to bait Rain in by flash in the site, hits him, but the auto sniper tags him, and that puts him from 73 to 8. Now it's definitely done. Again, he's going to try the same tactic ah. one way and look the other, but Alu is there, and it's all three rounds on the CT side going to phase. Keeping the dream alive. 3 0. It's first and 19 if you're not aware of the rule set here. And his rain just completely gunning them down. And I was kind of building it up. I thought he'd get a couple of kills here, but this first one was great. Through the smoke, that's why the auto sniper is so powerful in CSGO. It's uh, an expensive purchase, and not everyone can put it off. But on maps like this, where there's a lot of smoke usage, you can actually use it very effectively in those sort of scenarios. So well done by him. 3-0, one round required on the T side here from FaZe. Didn't have a good showing on the first half of regulation, but you know what? Now they're kind of fired up, I feel like it's going to be a different case. They just kept rushing ramp. That's how they found their last two rounds. Will they go back to that? I'm not so sure. I think they're going to want to try and do this with the defaults and try and do it properly. They've got in the heads of Optic now. On to Twinkie with a fast play. Tarek set and ready. AWP for him. And he's going to watch a small gap cross. It's Naf that starts it off. Flash out and actually reached the catwalk. Here. Very terrible position to be caught in behind the red box. Tries to do what he can with it. He's gonna have to equalize at this point, but he gets caught by AZ. It's now a three versus two on map point for FaZe. Not only have they pulled this back against all odds, they might be able to force out the third. 
And final map in this series is Kerrigan waits. Stan's got to go aggressive, go hunting, and it's perfect position for Kerrigan. Takes him down. It's all on to Mixwell. Bomb can go any which way that it likes. A minute and three to work with. And Mixwell's desperately hoping that it goes the way he stands. But even if it does, they'll have Heaven covered off. So he's got to pick his angle perfectly, and they're slowly going down toward the stairwell. This is going to go lower. Yeah, Mixwell up against it now. This one round takes us to cash the third map. No one thought it was possible. We thought this was done. AZ and Kiyoshima, that mental fortitude to keep on pushing, never giving up. And it comes down to this moment. Can Mixwell do anything about this? His footsteps around him. Should get his first kill. Takes down Carrigan. But that's a little bit of a ruse. His teammates aren't actually there. They're towards the lower bomb side. And now they get the information off that. Quite smart. Walks him away, buys more time, and we know exactly where he's coming from. Mixwell, he'll go hunting. AZ's position control room again. He loves these stairwells. He's using them. Flash through. Doesn't matter. AZ. What a game from him. And FaZe is back. I said they couldn't climb the green wall. They just climbed a very steep one to bring this series 1-1. One, one. Yeah, amazing that they actually managed to pull that back. You have to say, look, desperate at the end of the first half. They're just rushing round two rounds in a row. So anyway, they actually got rounds close on the T half. And we get to the second one. Optic find round number 15 relatively early.